Let's do this one interesting question. In a car race, car A beats car B by 45 kilometers, car B beats car C by 50 kilometers, and car A beats car C by 90 kilometers. The distance in kilometers over which the race has been conducted is very interesting question. Some race A beats B by 45 and A beats C by 90. And so let's assume the distance is x. When A beats B by 45, that means when A completes the race, B is done only x minus 45. A beats C by 90 kilometers, or when A completes the race, C has done only x minus 90. Right? The interesting thing here, we are told that B beats car C by 50 kilometers. That means when B completes the race, so we can't compare this state. B should have completed the race or when B finishes the whole thing, C would have done only x minus 50. Very interesting, it becomes a classic ratios question. The first context, when A does x, B does x minus 45, C does x minus 90. When B does x, then C does x minus 50. Right? Very simple, very, 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 the only thing we need to think about is ratios, nothing more than that. The ratio of distance covered between B to C is always the same. So x minus 45 by x minus 90 is x by x minus 50 cross multiply simplify if you are through and so I am going to do that x minus 45 by x minus 90 x minus 45 by x minus 90 is equal to x by x minus 50 cross multiply we will have x square minus 95 x plus 45 into 50 I do not want to multiply this this is 45 is equal to x square minus 90x. This goes off. Take this 95 that side. 45 into 50 is 95x minus 90x, which is 5x, or x is 450 kilometers. A lot of these ratio questions just become races questions, just become ratio questions. And the distance traveled by A to distance traveled by B is always the same, no matter what the length of the race is. B to C always the same. And so just translate to ratio, we are good to go. Again, wonderful question. From an interior point of an equilateral triangle, perpendiculars are drawn on all three sides. The sum of the lengths of the three perpendiculars is S in the area of the triangle is. And so this is one funda that you should know, but I'm going to assume we don't know that. We'll start from there. And so take a point here, dropping a perpendicular. Dropping a perpendicular, dropping a perpendicular. And so you drop a perpendicular to three. What will these three add up to? The question is saying the sum of those three is a constant for an equilateral triangle. Right? Now, one thing is to prove that it will be a constant. The other thing from an exam point of view is to say, okay, I'm going to figure out a point such that it's easy to calculate this. What will I do? I'll not select a point on the interior. I'll select this point. From this point, I'll drop a perpendicular here. From this point, I need to draw a perpendicular to that line. Nothing, just a point. This point, perpendicular to this line, just a point. So those two don't add too much. Or the total, nothing but the altitude. See if you can prove this. From any point on the interior of an equilateral triangle, if you drop three perpendicular to the three sides, the sum of those three perpendiculars will add up to the altitude of the equilateral triangle. And not rocket science, very easily provable. See if you can prove it. But from an exam point of view, you don't need to do that. Pick one point, you're good to go. Or you could have picked the centroid or, or ortho center or circum center. They're all coincident. From that point, you could have assumed and then done this. Or you'll always come back to this. This question effectively is saying S is root 3 by 2a. Done. So the sum of all this is root 3a by 2. Or a is 2s by root 3. Area of the equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 a square that you should know. So therefore area is root 3 by 4 into 2s by root 3 into 2s by root 3. 1 root 3 gets knocked off. 2 into 2 is 4 s square by root 3. Yeah, luckily we have that good to go. And the sum of the three altitudes, 
sum of the three perpendiculars will be equal to the altitude of the equilateral triangle. That's one funda that you should know. After that, we're just plugging in the formula. So again, it's a lovely, lovely question, very challenging question. At least I found it to be challenging. Right? In a group of 10 students, the mean of the lowest nine students is 42, while the mean of the highest nine students is 47. For the entire group of 10 students, the maximum possible mean exceeds the minimum possible mean by. And so 10 students, let's say A1, A2, all the way till A10. Mean, mean of the lowest nine scores is 42. So I'm going to add up A1 to A9. Sum of all this is 42 into 9. When I don't want to deal with the mean, I want to deal with the total, the nine entities. So total is 42 into 9. The sum of the these nine is 47 into 9. Sitting here is a very simple, very powerful idea. The sum of the first nine is A1 through to A9. That is, keeping A1 aside, it is A2 to A9. Some of the last nine is A2 to A10, or keeping A10 aside, it is A2 to A9. This bunch is present in both of these sums. And very simple. And so A1 plus this bunch is 42 into 9. A10 plus this bunch is 47 into 9. You subtract one from the other, you can get A10 minus A9. And so I want to write this down differently. A1 plus this total is 42 into 9. A10 plus this total is 47 into 9. This total is everything from A2 to A9. You subtract one from the other. A10 minus A1 is 47 minus 42 into 9, 5 into 9, 45. Or this number is 45 more than this number. Okay. Now, let's rewrite it like that. So, we have A1, A2, A3, all the way till A9. And this will be A1 plus 45. For the entire group of 10 students, the maximum possible mean exceeds the minimum possible mean by. So we need to find the maximum possible mean, we need to find the minimum possible mean. Very simple idea, going from 1, this is one number A1, this is A1 plus 45. And so quite simply you can say, I want the remaining mean, the lowest for the scores be 42. So I can have one instance where each of these numbers is 42. And that number will be 42 plus 45. Okay. The other extreme will be the instance where each of the last numbers is 47. So you plonk this as 47, 47, 47. This number is also 47. The first number is 47 minus 45, which is 2. This will represent the minimum, this will represent one boundary, this will represent another boundary. Find the difference in, in the means, that's the answer you're looking for. And one extreme is when A1 through to A9 are all equal. Another extreme is when A2 to A10 are all equal. Plonk this, plonk this, find the means and you're good to go. Find the mean in the first case, all of these have 42. So that 42 averages out to 42, plus this additional 45, 45 over 10 instances. So this average will be 42 plus 4.5. Everything has 42. This also has 42 plus an additional 45. 45 over 10 units is 42 plus 4.5. This average is direct 46.5. This one, there are 9 47s or 10 47s minus a 45. This average will be 47 minus 4.5. 42 plus 4.5. This is 46.5. This is 47 minus 4.5, which is 42.5. The difference between these two is 4. The choice you're looking for. And wonderful question, delightful question. First, we have to anchor that A10 is A1 plus 45. Then for either extreme, it's going to be put A1 to A9 equal, put A2, A10 to A2 equal. Both extremes get uh, discovered, and then you can find the minimum and maximum. Let's do this question. The number of pairs of integers x comma y satisfying x greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to minus 20 and 2x plus 5y is 99 s. These kind of questions find one solution and then build from there. Find one solution and then build from there. Right? 2x plus 5y is 99. This is going to be an even number. 
So from 99, subtract an even number and then find the multiple of 5. So if it's from 99, you subtract an even number, you'll get an odd number. Find an odd multiple of 5. The best case I can think of is when y is 19, 95 comes about. So the one solution that I can think of is x equal to 2, y equal to 19. This works. Fine. Right? X greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to minus 20. We can't count this. Fine. Right? This is not a right solution. X is 2, y is 19, does not work for us. Fine. Right? But this is one solution. We've got one solution. After this, what we do? You keep increasing x, y should decrease. Or if you keep decreasing x, y should increase. That much we know. X is multiplied by 2, y is multiplied by 5. Think about this. You have to find something to go up in x. That should be offset by a fall in y and so any increase in x will in increase this by multiples of 2 any change in y will change this in multiples of 5 or if you change x by 5 you'll change y by 2 what does that mean if you put x equal to 7 y will be 14 you increase this by 5 sorry y will be 17 decrease this by 2 the total goes up by 10 the total falls by 10 it gets cancelled out. So x equal to 7 gives us 2 into 7, 14 plus 85 is 99. That works. Next one, x will be 12, y will be 15. x will be 17, y will be 13 and so on. And so we have now got a pattern for all the values. Now let's put that condition. x greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to minus 20. Here x is not greater than or equal to y. Here x is not greater than or equal to y. Here, no, this one works. Right? You keep in decreasing x and increasing y. y is 21 and x is minus 3. None of those will work. So we're looking for solutions below this. 17, 13 is the, the first starting point. After that, this becomes 22, y becomes 11. This becomes 27, y becomes 9. 27 into 2 is 54. 9 into 5 is 45, they add up to 99. Right? So the first condition x greater than or equal to y works. Right? Now we have to think about y greater than or equal to minus 20. This keeps on going down. You go 9, 7, 5, 3, 1, minus 1, etc, 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 etc. But then till what point? It starts at 13, 11, 9, 7, 1, minus 1, minus 3, minus 19. It can't go any further. It can't go below minus 19. It becomes minus 21. That condition won't get satisfied. All we need to do is figure out how many are there in this count. We're good to go. And so minus 1 to minus 19 is 10, 10 sets. 1, 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 plus 10, 17 values are there. And very interesting set. These kind of questions find one solution and then think about how X and Y will make move such that one offsets the other. So you have a pattern. After we find the pattern, look at the other condition that are sitting there. So x greater than or equal to y greater than or equal to minus 20. In some cases, it could be mod x greater than y. It could be x and y both positive. Some x and y are natural numbers, something else. Find one solution and then you find the pattern. And then you think about how many numbers, how many pairs will satisfy the other condition. The value of log of a by b to the base a plus log of b by a to the base b for 1 less than a less than or equal to b cannot be equal to. Let's look at this. First, we know log of a by b is log a minus log b. So this one will simplify it as log a to the base a minus log b to the base a. This one we can split as log b to the base b minus log a to the base b. This is one, this is one. So this two sitting here. 2 minus of log b to the base a plus log a to the base b. I'm going to call it as x plus 1 by x. Why am I writing like this? If log b to the base a were x, then log a to the base b would be 1 by x. Log a to the base b is just a reciprocal of log b to the base a. Right? So it cannot be equal to, is what we are saying. It cannot be equal to. First of all, this is a beautiful function x plus 1 by x simple idea is either always greater than or equal to 2, it's greater than or equal to 2 or it is less than or equal to minus 2.
this cannot lie between minus 2 and plus 2. Right? So, if it were 2, this will be 0. So, 0 is possible. If it were 3, it can be minus 1. So, this is possible. This is possible. If it were minus 2.5, it could be minus 1.5. That's possible. For it, for this expression to be 1, x plus 1 by x should be 1. That's not possible. That's what we are looking at. One step, one aspect here we are looking at is log, proper, log logarithm property being manipulated a little bit. The second idea here this is very powerful. x plus 1 by x is all is either greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to minus 2. It cannot sit between minus 2 and plus 2. That's the one idea we are plugging in here. So if it were 2, the expression will be 0. If it were 3, expression will be minus 1. If it were 2 and a half, expression will be minus 0.5. Expression can never be equal to 1 because then it will mean x plus 1 by x has to be 1. That's not possible. Let's do this one. Let the mth and nth terms of a geometric progression be 3 by 4 and 12 respectively, where m is less than n. If the common ratio of the progression is an integer r, then the smallest possible value of r plus n minus m is. Right? So we are having 3 by 4 here. Then we go to 12. And so m is less than n. So this is the mth term. This is the nth term. Straight away we know that n minus m is positive. And we may take a certain number of steps to go here. And put 4, it could be 5. We don't know that. And so we know that r is an integer. And so if r were an integer, r power some k will take us from 3 by 4 to 12. And so or r power k is 12 by 3 by 4. 12 by 3 by 4 is 12 into 4 by 3, which is 16. R is an integer. 16 can be written as 2 power 4 or 4 square. And we are looking for R to be an integer and K to be an integer. 2 power 4 or 4 square. One of these two. So R is 2 or R could be 4. K is nothing but the difference between N and M. We figure out, substitute, simplify, find this. There is one catch here. Keep this in mind. R can be negative. So R can be minus 2, whole power 4 is also 16. R can be minus 4. We want R plus N minus M to be minimum. So definitely choose R to be negative. That doesn't change life. So we're looking at either minus 2 whole power 4 or minus 4 whole power 2. This number is K, which is effectively N minus M. From M, how many terms do we have to jump to the nth term? And so so either r is minus 2 and n minus m is plus 4 or r is minus 4 and n minus m is plus 2. We want the smallest possible value of this. So we'll have to choose r is minus 4, n minus m is plus 2, minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2. And the common ratio is minus 4. We're looking for the second term from 3 by 4 to go to 12. Let's solve this one. Wonderful question, really tough, but there's a very simple juicy way of doing this. I'm going to do it by the juiciest method possible. I'll give you the starting step for doing the more rigorous method, but not going to get into that. Right. X and Y are positive real numbers satisfying X plus Y is 102. Then the minimum possible value of 2601 into 1 plus 1 by X into 1 plus 1 by Y. Talk about positive real numbers, and the best way to go about it is pick two extremes. Put x is 0.1, y is 101.9, or x is 1, y is 101. The other extreme, put x is 51, y is 51. You're yeah, true. Let's do that. Let's put x is 1, y is 101. We worry only about this 1 plus 1 by 1 into 1 plus 1 by 101. This is one possibility, or we're talking about 1 plus 1 by 51 into 1 plus 1 by 51. This is barely more than 1, but this is 2. This is 2 into 1 point something. Both of these are barely more than 1. And so this is going to be way greater than this. Or we want to find the minimum possible value. The way to go about it, Planck x as 51, y as 51, both equal, we are good to go. 
what do we do that let's look at that put x as 51 so looking at 2601 in 1 plus 1 by 51 or 52 by 51 into 52 by 51 1 plus 1 by 51 is 52 by 51 51 into 51 funnily enough is 2601 52 into 52 you should find that but I happen to know that it is 2704 so the, the 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 textbook way of doing this trying to establish trying to find the maximum way of this maximum range for this all of that is, is tricky but the, the quick, quick and dirty way we are told that both are positive real numbers stick both of them as equal stick both of them far apart and then see where you land up both of them far apart takes us to a larger number equal takes us to a very small number go for the small number you're good to go the other way of doing this x plus y is 102 i'm going to anchor around the midpoint so i'm going to say x is 51 plus k y is 51 minus k so we have incorporated that constraint with a single variable so you can say 2601 into 1 plus 1 by 51 plus k into 1 plus 1 by 51 minus k and simplify you'll get an expression in terms of k you have a look at it you'll be able to find where it goes to maximum where it goes to minimum and then you're good to go the, the textbook method works like this you won't have a differentiator anything you can still find the answer it's not rocket science that method also takes you to the answer reasonably quickly but this is far better plonk in one extreme plonk in the other extreme you're good to go For the same principal amount, the compound interest for two years at 5% per annum exceeds the simple interest for three years at 3% per annum by rupees 1125. Then the principal amount in rupees, very simple question. If the principal were P, amount at the end of two years is P into 1.05 whole square. Because 5% two years minus P, this is compound interest. Simple interest is P into N into R by 100 for three years. This is compound interest. Simple interest is P into 3 into 3%. 3 1.05 whole square is P into 1.1025 minus P. 1125. Yeah, so this is 0 0.1025 P, whereas this is. 0.09 p you subtract one from the other just 25 point 0 0.0125 p point 0.0125 p or 125 by 10,000 10000 0, 0, 0. times p is 1125 125 into 8 is 1000 125 into 9 is 1125 so we can cancel this, make it 9 or the principal is 9 times 10,000 or 90,000. It really helps to know some numbers. It, you can do 1.05 whole square is 1.1025. Life is easy or plonk in the calculator, not rocket science. You simplify that, you get the difference. If you know 125 into 8 is 1, is 0.125 into 8 is 1, 125 into 8 is 1,000. Life is simple. Into 9 is 1125. So you can plonk this as 9, 9 into 10,000, 90,000. An absolute sitter you should be nailing this again very interesting question let c be a circle of radius 5 meters having center at o let p q be a chord of c that passes through the points a and b where a is located 4 meters north of o and b is located 3 meters east of o then the length of p q in meters is nearest to look at this one draw the circle center o PQ is a chord of C, so let's draw PQ. Passes through points A and B, where A is located 4 meters north of O. So this is A, 4 meters north, and B is located 3 meters east of O. B, 3 meters north and east, therefore, this is 90 degrees. Right? This is PQ radius of this circle is 5 meters lovely we need to find pq how do we do that we need to have some mechanism anytime you're dealing with chord and a circle it's always good to draw the line from center of the circle to midpoint of the chord 
that will be perpendicular to the chord and then work from there so draw this line call this as r we find pr we know that is same as rq therefore we can find pq life is good how do we find pr if you join op that is 5 meters op is fine fine if you know pr we can find or or if you find no or we can find pr pythagoras theorem nothing more than that how do you find op very simple think about this triangle aob i'm going to draw this triangle make it bigger a o b we want to find or in this right so this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 3 4 5 pythagorean triplet from o the perpendicular line here oops this is or right imagine this to be 90 degrees a straight line so this is or half into base into height is area or is the height when the base becomes ab so or into 5 is 3 into 4 so half into 3 into 4 is half into or into 5 the half disappears or is 12 by 5 or or is equal to 2.4 so this measures 2.4 now what do we do i'm going to go to the next slide and draw just that part that i want to draw or is 2.4 radius is 5 this is 2.4 this part is what we need to find so this is square root of 5 square minus 2.4 square 2 point square is 2.4 square is 5.76 so 25 minus 5.76 which is 19.24 so this distance is square root of 19.24 R distance PQ equals 2 times square root of 19.24. 4 square is 16, 5 square is 25, 4.5 square is 20.25. So this is between 4 square and 4.5 square, closer to 4.5. So maybe this is 4.4, 4.35, something like that. Into 2, you're looking for an answer in the 8.7, 8.8 range. This works beautiful question i'm going to go back one slide draw that look at this diagram again we want to find pq we straight away say from center draw a line to midpoint of pq that will be perpendicular to pq we know we want to find pr which will be equal to rq or we want to find or how do we find or we look at triangle aob for that we find or we know or we know op we can find pr pythagoras theorem and we are back here right. tough question Time consuming question is Anil buys 12 toys and labels each with the same selling price. He sells 8 toys initially at 20% discount on the labeled price. Then he sells the remaining 4 toys at an additional 25% discount on the discounted price. Thus he gets a total of rupees 2112 and makes a 10% profit. With no discounts, his percentage of profit would have been. Let's look at this. Let's say his selling price is P. Is the selling price that he has marked on it is P. So he has 12 toys labeled with the selling price of P. He sells 8 toys at a 20% discount or he sells 8 of them at a point, price point of 0.8P. Lovely. Then he sells the remaining 4 toys at an additional 25% discount. 25% is 1 fourth. Now this 1 fourth is on this 0.8P. 1 fourth of 0.8 is 0.2 or he sells for 0.6p he sells four of these this is the total amount of money he generates right? 8 into 0.8 is 6.4 so this is 6.4p plus 2.4p or he makes 8.8p this is his total selling price and he generates 8.8 .8 times p as a total selling price and he makes a 10% profit. 10% profit takes him to 8.8p or cost price is 8.8p divided by 1.1 which is 8p. Lovely. 
with no discounts, his percentage of profit would have been. His cost price is 8p. Assume he makes no discounts. He doesn't give any discounts. That means he's selling at p. He's selling 12 goods at p. Or he'll make a total of 12 times p. Cost price is 8p. What would have been his selling price? So selling price start. What is imagining is 12p. 8p to 12p, profit of 4p, half of cost price or profit percentage of 50%. And we don't even need this number. We don't need that 2112. They're just sitting there to, to, to mess things up, to confuse us. So 12 toys, 8 he sells at 0.8, 4 he sells at 0.6. This, these are the kind of questions where if you can think of 20% discount as 0.8, it's useful. A further 25% discount taking us to 0.6 is useful. Get to 8.8p. That is 11, 10% profit or total cost price is 8p. If you're given no discount, total selling price is 12p or 4p on 8p, half his cost price is making us profit or his profit percentage would have been 50%. If x and y are non-negative integers such that x plus 9 is equal to z, y plus 1 is equal to z and x plus y less than z plus y, in the maximum possible value of 2x plus y equals 0. To start with, I like the idea of drawing a number line. which We can plot everything there. There is x, x plus 9 is z. This is plus 9. y plus 1 is z. So y is here. All three are linked. When I started doing this, and I realized I don't even need to draw the number line because all three can be captured with the same variable. Right? So here we have x plus y, which is x plus x plus 8 less than x plus 9 plus 5 or 2x plus 8 is less than x plus 14 or x is less than 6. Lovely. The maximum possible value of 2x plus y, higher x is, the higher y will be. We know that they are non-negative integers, x is less than 6. So x can be 5. If x were 5, then y would be x plus 8, 13. 2x plus y, 2 into 5, plus 13. 10 plus 13, 23. That's the maximum. I started off doing this, but I realized that all three are part of the same variable. It becomes a very simple question. Let's try this one question on functions. Let's look at this. x squared plus ax plus b f of x is x squared plus ax b, g of x is f of x plus 1 minus f of x minus 1, f of x is greater than or equal to 0 for all real x and g of 20 is 72, the smallest possible value of b. This is a brilliant starting point. So let's define g of x first. f of x plus 1 minus f of x minus 1. So this is x plus 1 whole square plus a times x plus 1 plus b minus of x minus 1 whole square plus a times x minus 1 plus b. We subtract one from the other. There will be a plus ax ax that will get cancelled. Plus a minus a subtract that you will get 2a plus b minus b this will go off. x square plus 2x plus 1 x square minus 2x plus 1 this will be 4x. So we know g of 20 equals 72. Let's plug that in. G of 20 is 4 into 20 plus 2a. This is 72. 4 into 20 is 80. 80 plus 2a is 72. So 2a is minus 8 or a is minus 4. Lovely. Now let's come back to the remaining part of the question. a is minus 4. We want to find the smallest possible value of b. So x square minus 4x plus b. This is f of x. We know f of x is greater than or equal to 0. What does this mean? This means that this number can be expressed as a square plus something, which is when it will be greater than or equal to 0. x square minus 4x plus 4. This can be written as x minus 2 the whole square. x square minus 4x plus 4 is x minus 2 whole square. So this will be plus b minus 4 greater than or equal to 0 or b should be at least 4. When wonderful question. First we find the expression for g of x. Then we plug in g of 20 is 72 and find a. Then come back to this expression. 
When we go to that expression, we say it's x square minus 4x plus b. We know that's always greater than or equal to 0. So that means it can be reduced as a perfect square, square of a quadratic x minus a whole square, something of that form, plus a positive number or a non-negative number. So we can deduce what b will be by completing the square of that, that expression. So the smallest value b can take is 4. The distance from B to C is thrice that from A to B. Two trains travel from A to C via B. The speed of train 2 is double that of train 1 while traveling from A to B. And their speeds are interchanged while traveling from B to C. The ratio of the time taken by train 1 to that of time taken by train 2 in traveling from A to C is interesting question, simple question. Let's draw the diagram. B to C is thrice that from A to B. So A. B, C. Distance where D, this distance is 3D. The speed of train 2 is double that of train 1 while traveling from A to B. So this is T1, T2. Speed is S, speed is 2S. And their speeds are interchanged while traveling from B to C. So this becomes 2S, this becomes S. The ratio of the time taken by train 1 to that taken by train 2. Train 1 time taken would be sorry, d by s plus 3d by 2s. By train 2 would be d by 2s plus 3d by s. The LCM is 2s. This is 2d by 2s. So this is 5d by 2s. This is 6d by 2s. This is 7d by 2s. The ratio of times taken is this is to this which is 5 is to 7. Simple enough question, capture it in terms of ratios, plug in a d, 3d, s, 2s, be careful with the data, you are through. Let's do this one, really vague question. Fine, so I am going to read this and then tell you what my p with this is. The sum of the perimeter of an equilateral triangle and a rectangle is 90 centimeters. The area t of a of the triangle and area R of a rectangle, both in centimeter square, satisfy the relation R equal to T square. Hate these kind of questions where both of these are the same units and then you capture it in centimeter square and frame this equation. Like there are hundreds of ways to frame the equation without resorting to this. Fine. My P was side. We'll come back to this one. The sides of the rectangle are in the ratio 1 is to 3. The length of in centimeters of the longer side of the rectangle is whatever, whatever it is. Fine. So, the perimeter of equilateral triangle and a rectangle is 90 centimeters. I'm going to start with the rectangle. And so this is x, this is 3x, x, 3x. And so perimeter is 8x. Lovely. The area T of the triangle and area R of a rectangle, both in centimeter square, satisfy the relation R equals T square. And first of all, let's say side of the equilateral triangle is A. And area would be root 3 by 4 a square. And so r equals t square. So if we square this, that should be equal to area of the rectangle. So we take this and square this. That will be equal to area of the rectangle, which is 3x square. Root 3 by 4 a square, the whole square is 3x square. Lovely. So root 3 by 4 a square, the whole square is 3 by 16 a power 4 equals 3 x square a power 4 is 16 x square or a square equals 4 x lovely a square equals 4 times x now we can go on and say then the, the longer side of the rectangle that's what we need to find after this we can even go on to trial and error which is what i'm going to do the longer side of the rectangle is 3x we know that a square let's go back here we know a square is 4x if 3x were 27 then x would be 9 then 8x is 72 the remaining a, the side of the triangle is 6. So x is 9, a is 6, 
a square is 36 4 into 9 is 36 this works this works after that point of time we can slip into trial and error and then simplify if we want to still avoid trial and error we know a square equal to 4x we know 8x plus 3a equals 90 a square is 4x so 8x would be 2a square 2a square plus 3a minus 90 equal to 0 solve that we'll get some expression for a and then we can simplify and solve for that fine so uh, a routine question mildly irritating at least i feel peeved by it because of that one expression r equal to t square i find it an annoying way of uh, describing a question otherwise very doable this is a lovely lovely question wonderfully challenging question let's look at this one in how many ways can a pair of integers x comma a be chosen such that x square minus 2 mod x plus modulus of a minus 2 is equal to 0 lovely question because this is this can be framed as an equation in mod x and so the wonderful idea and so now think about this so we have mod x square minus 2 mod x plus a positive number is equal to 0 the beauty here is x square mod x square minus 2 mod x plus 1 equal to 0 is a nice square of a quadratic expression how do i say that so mod x minus 1 whole square is x square minus 2 mod x plus 1 this can be equal to 0 and mod x is equal to 1 but it cannot this number cannot be more than 1 so straight away we know that this constant term if it were more than one we have no solution it is positive if there are more than one we have no solution we know we're talking about integers or modulus of a minus 2 modulus of a minus 2 can be 0 or it can be 1 nothing else is possible fine so i'm going to look at both possibilities let's say that's equal to 0 so now we have mod x the whole square minus 2 mod x is equal to 0 mod x into mod x minus 2 equal to 0 or x could be 0 x could be 2 x could be minus 2 for all of these possibilities a equal to 2 works so there are three possible solutions here x and a 0 comma 2 2 comma 2 minus 2 comma 2 three possibilities work now let's go to the other scenario where we say mod x minus 1 whole square is equal to 0 and so mod x minus 1 whole square is 0 this means mod x is 1 x could be 1 or minus 1 this is the scenario when modulus of a minus 2 is 1 or a is 3 or a is 1 a minus 2 is 1 or a minus 2 is minus 1 both are possible now it could be x is 1 a is 3 x is 1 a is 1 or x is minus 1 a is 3 x is minus 1 a is 1 four possibilities exist all four are possible here we have three possibilities here we have four totally seven wonderful question delightful question from the idea of completion of squares we start off with that and then isolate that the constant term can only be 0 or 1 plug in the constant term to be 0 find all possible solutions Con put the constant term to be 1 and find all possible solutions be rigorous remember you're dealing with modulus of x remember you're dealing with modulus of a minus 2 find wonderful questions with the delightful seven answers two circular tracks t1 and t2 of radii 100 meters and 20 meters respectively touch at a point a starting from a at the same time Ram and Rahim are walking on track 1 and track 2 at speeds of 15 and 5 respectively. The number of full rounds that Ram will make before he meets Rahim again for the first time is interesting question. So let's talk about T1, T2. This has radii 100 meters, this has radii 20 meters. They respectively touch at point A. Starting from A, at the same time, Ram and Rahim are walking on track T1 and track T2 at speeds 15 and 5. So 15 kilometers per hour, 
फाइव किलोमीटर्स पर आर की थिंग हियर वी गॉट टू कैलकुलेट द टाइम टेकन बाय राम टू कंप्लीट अ लैप टाइम टेकन बाय रहीम टू कंप्लीट अ लैप एंड देन वी लेफ्ट टाइम द एलसीएम ऑफ दोस टू टाइम्स दैट्स द आइडिया राइट नाउ दिस हैज अ रेडियस ऑफ 100 मीटर्स वी हैव टू थिंक अबाउट 2 पाई इनटू 100 दिस हैज अ रेडियस रेडियस ऑफ 20 वी हैव टू थिंक अबाउट 2 पाई इनटू 20 सो टाइम टेकन इज 2 पाई इनटू 100 बाय 15 रिमेंबर दिस इज इन meters this is in kilometers per hour i don't care right now i don't care we'll come to how we will fix it but right now i don't care i don't care about the units that unit is actually hour by kilometers whatever that unit is we don't care i'm not looking to write it in seconds right this one is 2 pi into 20 by 5 now what are you trying to do is see if you're going to compare these two right the 2 pi gets knocked off This is hundred by fifteen. Let's knock it off. This is twenty by three. This is twenty by five. Right? So, or this is to that ratio of time taken is twenty by three. Is to twenty by five, or one by three is to one by five, or five is to three. Right? So, if Ram takes some five units, Sham will take three units. Call that as units. You don't care. So Ram will come at five units here, at ten units here, at fifteen units here. Sham will come at three units, six units, nine units, twelve units, fifteen units. Why am I stopping with fifteen? If you call this as five units and three units, after fifteen units of time, which involves a pi and a five by eighteen, eighteen by five, whatever else we want to do, whatever ratio we want to do, after fifteen units, Ram will be at the starting point. After fifteen units, Rahim will be at the starting point. Both of them meet here. That time, Ram would have done three rounds. Rahim would have done five rounds, and that's when they'll meet at the starting point again. Or the number of full rounds that Ram will make before he meets Rahim again for the first time, Ram takes longer time. He would have done fewer rounds, three rounds. In that time, Rahim would have done five rounds. We just need to find the ratio of their speeds. Everything else is, doesn't matter. A and B are two points on a straight line. Ram runs from A to B, while Rahim runs from B to A. After crossing each other, Ram and Rahim reach their destination in one and four minutes, respectively. Again, standard question: A, B. Ram runs from A to B. Rahim from B to A. Ram and Rahim reach their destinations in one minute and four minutes. So they meet somewhere here. Ram goes like this, and then goes. Reaches in one minute. Rahim goes like this, and then reaches in four minutes. Both of them have taken the same time to reach that point. Ram travels for t minutes. Rahim travels for t minutes. And very simple, one crucial point, and then we are through. To travel this stretch, Ram takes t minutes. Rahim takes four minutes. To travel this stretch, Ram takes one minute. Rahim takes t minutes. to travel the same stretch of some equal stretches of distance time taken by ram and rahim should be in the same ratio it's like saying ram and rahim travel at constant speeds if for a particular distance the time taken in the ratio of 1 is to 3 some other distance also time taken will be in the ratio 1 is to 3 that's all we need to do or quite simply we can say t by 4 equals 1 by t t square is 4 t is 2 or they meet After two minutes, so they meet after two minutes. Ram takes one more minute. They meet after two minutes. Ram Rahim takes four more minutes. The ratio of Ram speed to Rahim speed. Ram takes three minutes. Rahim takes six minutes. Ram is quicker, twice as quick. Ratio of their speeds. Ram speed to Rahim speed. Ram is quicker, two is to one. And Ram travels within three minutes. Rahim takes six minutes. Ram is quicker, is twice as quick, two is to one. C1 and C2 be concentric circles such that the diameter of C1 is 2 cm longer than that of C2 or radius of C1 is 1 cm longer than that of C2. If a chord of C1 has a length 6 cm and is tangent to C2, chord of C1 6 cm and tangent to C2. So C2 is inside, C1 is outside. This is C1, this is C2. 
a chord of C1, which is 6 centimeters, say it's AB. The point of tangent C will be perpendicular, it's concentric, this is 3, this is 3, this is radius, this is radius plus 1. Then the diameter of C1 is what we need to find. Join this, this is 90 degrees, this is R, this is R plus 1. Three sides of a right angle triangle, 3 R, R plus 1. I already know this, 3, 4, 5. Or the inner circle has radius 4 centimeters. Outer circle has radius 5 centimeters. The diameter of C1, 5 into 2, 10 centimeters. 3, 4, 5 Pythagorean triplet. You shouldn't be solving using Pythagoras theorem. 3 square plus R square is R plus 1 whole square. You can do that, but you shouldn't have to. Very interesting question, but very routine question. Beautiful question. My question I like because it's a very juicy way of doing this. Right? Uh, John takes twice as much time as Jack to finish a job. Jack and Jim together take one third of the time to finish the job than John takes working alone. John takes twice as much time as Jack to finish the job. So I'm say John, Jack. I'm going to talk about how efficient they are. Let's say Jack, John takes twice as much time. That means Jack is more efficient. If John can do X units per day, Jack can do two X units per day. Remember, this is not time, but amount of work done in a day. If John can do X, Jack can do 2X. Jack is twice as efficient as John, which is why John takes twice as much time. Jack and Jim taken together take one third of the time to finish the job than John takes working alone. Jack and Jim one third of the time. We still, if we introduce a Jim here, one third of the time to finish than John takes working alone. John does X units per day. These two guys take one third of the time or they should be doing 3x units of work. John does 2x, Jim should do x. If you think of it in terms of unit of work done in a day, this question becomes very simple. So John does x units, Jack and Jim together should be doing 3x because they are finishing in one third of the time. John, Jack does 2x, Jim should do the remaining x. Now let's look at the question. In order to finish the job, John takes three days more than that taken by the three of them working together. Three of them working together. That is 4x working per day. John takes three days more than that. John takes three days more. So x into n plus 3 equals 4x into n n plus 3 is 4n or n is 1 or when 4x are working they can do it in one day when x is working they'll take they'll take four days in how many days will jim finish the job working alone jim is x jim will take four days when 4x units are working they can finish it in one day when x units are working take four days In May, John bought the same amount of rice and the same amount of wheat as he had bought in April, but spent Rs 150 more due to the price increase of rice and wheat by 20% and 12% respectively. Rice, wheat, this is up 20%. This is up 12%. And he ended up spending 150 more. If John had spent 450 on rice in April, then how much did he spend on wheat in May? Very regular question. He spends 450 on rice in April. April. So this is going to be up 20% because the price of rice is up 20%. 20% is one fifth, or the additional is 90. The extra he spends on rice is 90. The total extra he spends is 150. Extra he spends on wheat is therefore 60. Now the rate at which wheat price increases is 12%. 12% of wheat price is 60 or wheat is 60 by 12%. 60 by 12 is 5. This should be 500 or in April, he spends 500 rupees on wheat apart from having spent 450 on, on rice. Then how much did he spend on wheat in May? In April, he spends 500. In May, he should have spent 12% more. 12% of 500 is 60. We've already seen that. 60 more. 
500 plus 60 by 60. Aaron bought some pencils and sharpeners, printing the same amount of money as Aaron. Aditya bought twice as many pencils and 10 fewer sharpeners. If the cost of one sharpener is rupees 2 more than the cost of a pencil, the minimum possible number of pencils bought by Aaron and Aditya together. Very interesting question, Likely not that easy. And so, you're buying pencils and sharpeners. Sharpeners, right? Yeah, sharpeners. We're going to talk about Aaron and Aditya. So Aaron bought pencils and sharpeners. Let's say he buys P pencils and S sharpeners. Aditya bought twice as many pencils, 2P and 10 fewer sharpeners. So S minus 10. The cost of pencil and sharpener were the same. Life would have been easy. Right? So, it's not the same. The cost of one sharpener is rupees two more than cost of a pencil. So cost of one pencil, if it were n, cost of one sharpener is n plus two. One pencil is n, n plus two. Now we should get to writing some equations because the total amount of money spent by both of them is same. P into n plus S times n plus two is the amount Aaron spent. 2p into n plus s minus 10 times n plus 2. So what is the extra cost coming to him on account of doubling the pencil is offset on account of buying 10 fewer sharpness. This p becomes 2p and going to increase the cost. s becomes s minus 10 that's going to decrease the cost. This offsets the other and then we'll find out what the difference is. Fine. So what we have to do now add these two up, add these two up, equate one to the other. And so pn plus sn plus 2s pn plus sn this is sn remember that plus 2s equals 2pn plus sn plus 2s minus 10n minus 20 so there's a the sn plus 2s which will continue to be there on both sides. There's a 2pn here, only a pn here. One of those we can cancel. Or pn equals 10n plus 20. I'll write that down. pn equals 10n plus 20. Obviously, there are quite a few values of pn and for this, this could be satisfied. Goes without saying that n has to be a, uh, an integer. But let's think about this. Sorry, P has to be an integer. Let's think about this. Can we restructure this equation in some form? Let's bring this over to this side. Pn minus 10n equals 20. Or n into P minus 10 is 20. Lovely. This is the number of pencils minus 10. Right? Number of pencils has got to be an integer. Now we want to find the minimum possible value of the pencils bought by Aaron and Aditya together. Aaron and Aditya together, they bought three P pencils, P plus two P. We want to find the minimum possible value of three P or we want to find the minimum possible value of P. Given what constraint, given the idea that P minus 10 times N is 20. Right? P has to be an integer, put P as 11. It cannot be 10 or lower, this will become zero. It cannot be negative. Put P as 11, this becomes 11 minus 10, which is 1, N is 20, 20 into 1 equals 20. P as 11 seems to satisfy this equation for one interesting value of N. So P equal to 11 works. If P were 11, 3P would be 33. That's the choice we're looking for. Lovely interesting question. We frame the equation, go to the algebra part, equate it, and then finally say, and what combination would P be the minimum? As it turns out, P 11 being the minimum works 11 is the minimum value p can take in which case 3p will be 33. A sum of money is split among Amal, Sunil and Mita A, S and M so that the ratio of the shares of Amal and Sunil is 3 is to 2. Amal and Sunil is 3 is to 2 while the ratio of shares of Sunil and Mita is 4 is to 5. Sunil is to Mita is 4 is to 5. I already like this. I'm going to write it as 6 is to 4. The ratio is 6 is to 4 is to 5. 
The difference between the largest and smallest of these three shares is rupees 400. Largest and smallest is 400. Then Sunil's share in rupees. Difference between this and this is two units. Two units is 400. Four units is 800. I'm going with 800. Fine. Six and four, the difference is two. Like two units of that correspond to 400. That's the difference. Sunil gets four units. It should be 800. Done. This is a very interesting question. Let's try this one. How many four digit numbers each greater than 1000 and each having all four digits distinct are there with seven coming before three and so four digit numbers each greater than 1000 effectively all four digit numbers and so 1000 does not come in our list anyway because we're talking about seven and three and all four digits should be distinct there are two points here one is we need to worry about all four being distinct then we need to worry about a zero being there because if selecting zero as one of the digits we have to worry about the fact that zero could be the leading digit i want to break this down seven coming before three there's definitely seven and three sitting inside so let's put seven and three somewhere seven and three can go into any one of any two of these four slots but any two slots you select there's only one order they can go in because seven has to come before three and or putting seven and three here can be done in four c two ways and so 7 and 3, 7 and 3, 7 and 3, whatever. 4C2 is 6. 6 ways done. We have a 7 sitting here and a 3 sitting here. Now let's dive deep and say 7 and 3 are in. Now we need to worry about the remaining two digits. Those two should be different from 7 and 3. We have 10 digits of which two are gone. Out of the 8, we need to select some two digits. That is 8C2. Not just that, we've selected two digits. Maybe we selected 5 and 9. It could be 5, 9 or 9, 5. It could be 5 and 9 or 9 and 5. 8C2 into 2. Lovely. 4C2 into 8C2 into 2. Now, we've accounted for all numbers having 7 and 3. 7 coming before 3. All four digits being distinct. Right? What are we missing here? We are missing or we are additionally counting numbers like 0, 7, 5, 3. This will get counted, mind you. But this should not get counted. Why should it not get counted? Because this number is not more than 1000. This is not a four digit number. So from this list, we subtract this. What are these numbers? These are numbers where first digit is 0. And then there is a 7 and 3 sitting inside. And 7 and 3 are in, 7 is ahead of 3. And then there's one more digit. So 7 ahead of 3, 7, 3, 7, 3, 7, 3. Three different positions 3c2 and right? into we have seven remaining digits all four digits are distinct mind you so 0 3 7 going away there are seven remaining digits any one of those could have been there so 3 into 7 or from this number subtract this number and we are through 4c2 is 6 8c2 is 8 into 7 by 2 28 into 2 minus 3 into 7 6 into is 12, 12 into 28, maybe we can carve out a 7, so 12 into 4 into 7, minus 3 into 7, so we can take out a 7, we can take out a 3 also, so we can take out entire 21 here, 7 into 3 goes away, 16 minus 1, 21 into 15, whatever that number turns out to be, 15 ones are 15, 5, 1, 30, 31, 315. So there's truly really 315 numbers possible that satisfy all of these conditions. Lovely. With that, we're done. For real x, the maximum possible value of x by square root of 1 plus x power 4. These kind of questions, trick 1 in the book. Whenever there's a square root sitting here, see if you can simplify this expression to have some kind of symmetry. What do I mean by that? There's an x on top and then the square root and 1 plus x power 4. 1 and x power 4 are far away and x is in the middle. This is x power 1, x power 0, x power 4. We are all over the place. But if you simplify this, make one very simple change. Divide by x in the numerator and denominator. So numerator is x by x. Denominator is 1 plus x power 4 by x square because inside the square root x by x is 1 is 1 by square root of 1 by x square 
plus x square. Lovely. Once you do this, you're through. We've already seen this in a couple of questions. x plus 1 by x is either greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to 1 minus 2. 1 by x square plus x square is always greater than or equal to 2. And so I'm going to start with this. x square plus 1 by x square is greater than or equal to 2. Or square root of x square plus 1 by x square is greater than or equal to root 2. 1 by square root of x square plus 1 by x square is less than or equal to 1 by root 2 or the maximum possible value 1 by root 2. The first thing divide numerator and denominator by x. Numerator get divided by x, denominator gets divided by x square inside the root. Then modify this. You, you need to be able to be able to see this expression as this expression. We know how x square plus 1 by x square behaves. Therefore, we know how square root of x square plus 1 by x square behaves. Therefore, we know how 1 by square root of x square plus 1 by x square behaves. So this is greater than or equal to 2. This is greater than or equal to root 2. 1 by this is less than or equal to 1 by root. This is a question from um, set theory, interesting one. Let's try this. Students in a college have to choose at least two subjects from chemistry, math and physics. The number of students choosing all three subjects is 18. Choosing math as one of their subjects is 23. Choosing physics as one of their subjects is 25. The smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry as one of their subjects is interesting. Let's draw the diagram. Okay. Math, physics, chemistry. I like that number 18 that goes here. We have maths here. Number of students taking math is 23. Choosing physics is 25. We want to find the smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry. When it is smallest, then these two should be as small as possible. Right? So could these two be zero? the smallest possible number of students who could choose chemistry as one of their subjects. College have to choose at least two subjects from chemistry, mathematics and physics. So these are all zero. And so if both of these were zero, the entire overlap has to sit here. That's not possible because this is 23, this is 25. The higher this is, the smaller this could be. So as high as possible, 18 goes here, we could put 5 here. 18 plus 5 adds up to 23. 18 plus 5 is 23 out of the 25. So we can put 2 here. This is the best possible scenario to have chemistry as low as possible. And that number will be 20. Remember, this is 18. These three are 0. If this has to be as low as possible, this has to be as high as possible. The moment we crack that, you are through. The number of integers that satisfy the inequality x square minus 5x plus 7 whole power x plus 1 equal to 1. And so x square minus 5x plus 7 whole power x plus 1 equal to 1. When can this happen? When can an exponent be equal to 1? Very simple idea. First up, 5 power 0 is 1. Anything power 0 is 1. So this goes to 0, we strike jackpot. And so that is one approach, one starting point. Another thing, 1 power anything is 1. 1 power 3, 1 power 5, 1 power 100, all of those are 1. So that's useful. These two, everyone will find. There's one other possibility. You could have minus 1 whole power 4 equal to 1. Minus 1 raised to the power an even number is 1. Minus 1 power 3 is minus 1. But minus 1 square, minus 1 power 6, minus 1 power 8, all of those are 1. So the three possibilities we need to account for. One, we've got to say the power goes to 0 and then simplify and see if it works. Then say the expression is plus 1, worry about the power. Then expression is minus 1, worry about the power being an even number. And let's do all three. First of all, power going to 0, so x is minus 1. That is a possibility. We substitute minus 1 here, minus 1 whole square is 1, minus 5 plus, so that works, 1 plus 5 plus 7 whole power 0. That will work. So x equal to minus 1 is one obvious possibility. We have it in the bag. Let's go to the next x square minus 5x plus 7 is equal to 1 or x square minus 5x plus 6 equal to 0 x minus 2 into x minus 3 is equal to 0 or x could be 2 or 3 if you put x as 2 or 3 this will become cube or power 4 1 cube 1 power 4 both of them work so x equal to 2 works x equal to 3 works 
x equal to minus 1 works. Now let's go to the final set of possibilities. x square minus 5x plus 7 is equal to minus 1. Or x square minus 5x plus 8 is equal to 0. So number of integers that satisfy the equality x square minus 5x plus 8 equal to 0. You have to split minus 5 in order to get a product of 8. x square minus 5x plus 1, 8 equal to 0. I don't think there are integer values that satisfy this because it's not something that splits easy. It's 2 into 4 or 1 into 8. Minus 2 into minus 4, minus 1 into 8, minus 8 don't work here. So there's no integer solution possible here. So 2 and 3 work, minus 1 works. There are three solutions possible. Generally, as a rule of thumb, you'll have to worry about this possibility also. In this case, it doesn't matter.